Hey there, this is uh, Jet doing a review for Parsex. Uh, it looks like their first scrim according to the VOD title. Um, and just going to be giving you some general notes, pointers, uh, first moves on Busan. Um, and then just kind of go from there. It's dry run for me too. I haven't watched the scrim beforehand, so there's going to be probably a decent amount of rewinding and general drawing, um, things along those lines. So let's just dive in and see what we got here. Um, volume is super low. Uh, and when they say, I mean, it's already tagged low volume. I turned it up all the way and I couldn't hear any voice, which kind of sucks. Um, but so I can't really make comments on comms. So if certain calls are made or you know people are doing certain things based on comms, um, then that's going to create kind of a big issue uh, for really me to be able to analyze it. Um, so ideally, next VOD, you know, I can get a little more volumes and get feedback and see what's going through people's minds, what calls are being made. I can make some more comments on communication, things like that. Um, but then this is just going to be raw gameplay, seeing what we're looking at. Um, basic idea here is that, for the most part, you guys are going goats, which is pretty straightforward. Um, they're actually doing the exact same thing. So um, I don't know if I touched on the push and pull with goats between with you guys yet, um, but in general, for goats, it's, it's, it's sort of a push and pull system, right, where you're kind of like, imagine that you're, you're doing like a little tug of war, right? For anything that you do that creates positive momentum means you guys are kind of, or you guys are losing ground right um from the other team is if they're providing positive momentum like into you guys and you guys will be backing up so that you can kind of resustain because you're healing there's no burst healing really except for the brick um and things that get discorded can get focused on and die pretty quick so for the most part when you're running goats uh, you know just try to think about like a tug of war right if they're pushing into you guys um and you guys are low you know it's a good idea to back up try to resustain um give them ground right and especially on control point it can be kind of an issue because you can you can the, the spice can be so long. Uh, I think watch Overlock, Overwatch League ones where they go like you know 14 ults one fight. Um, that if you're just kind of winning the micro battle where you're just getting the Ryan down, he has to back up or the team has to peel. Sorry, he has to blow bubbles, uh, not really be aggressive. Then you guys can take point and just kind of fight off it for the most part. But anyway, um, it's the same same concept uh, for the other team too. Um, if if you are doing positive things into them and making them back up and taking ground, you want to just keep keep kind of steamrolling that as long as you can. Um, obviously, like if they if they're low and they pop beat, then you kind of do like a micro disengage. The people use that to stabilize quite a bit, beat or trance, uh, rally not really so much. That's more of an engage. Um, and then obviously just keep an eye out for the money ults. So let's see how this goes out here. So they get to point, you guys get to point, playing off looks like center for the most part, which isn't bad. You guys are I can't really tell if you're playing condenser. I don't like the first person stuff. You guys get good picks though. Oh, that's against you. Okay, so let's watch let's watch what happens here. So you guys are the red team. Perfect. Sorry, I'm not really familiar with the names. So let's take a look at what happened here. Okay. So I don't really get a very good first person view. So let's see exactly what happens here. So it looks like your brig's probably playing a little bit too far forward to begin with. Um, yeah, you can see they got super low. So that, that's kind of where this this this, this whole this whole thing first kind of got to start going downhill. Um, so let's, let's zoom back a little bit. That was one thing. So if you look. Right here, and one thing you gotta watch out for too is that if the brig gets discorded, your Ryan hits like two swings on her, she's in really, really bad shape. So if any kind of chip damage happens, then they're pretty bad. You guys lose the immediate health engagement, which kind of sucks. Fisher takes a decent amount of damage to do a good focus fire. There's Zen staying a little bit farther back, so it's just he was just kind of waiting for you guys to peek. Wouldn't be a bad idea if you can see see that there's Zen staying farther back to try to force them around corners into your into your line of sight. Because if he is if he's playing back here, like way back here, right, and your Zen's playing like something a little bit a little bit closer over here. He's got more angles. So if you can try to force them into, into pulling around these angles where their Zen can't see, not only do they not really have harmony advantage anymore, but they can't get discords anymore. So it's something to try to keep an eye on, just, just like in the back of your mind. The Lucio is kind of being a red at Lucio. Something you can kind of think about and try to take advantage of too. Zen can usually get a couple right clicks off a of break stun. Um, or, or, sorry, Zen can get a couple right clicks into him. He's just jumping around like an idiot. Um, or he can get a break stun and like a hammer swing or something. So something to think about immediately right there. But yeah, your break was too far forward in the engage here. Um, I think they went to, I'm going to guess they went to go peel for the Zarya, I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, you don't really want to see them super far ahead of the tank line. Usually the Brig's job is to push things away from your team, right? Use that stun, right? Use that stun, uh, I said right click. Um, the stun shift combo to, to really create your tank some more space to resustain because it's a really downburst healing for the most part. So the second thing you saw your Ryan, your Zarya go down, you should just be looking to stun and kick him back. Stun, kick him back. Or just like kind of hold in front of the Ryan a little bit. You, so that he can't really 
punish very well, but you don't want to be super far ahead of your tank line. And that's kind of a communication thing, right? You have to know that your tanks are low and just make them, just sort of punish them for trying to take advantage of your line being low. You don't need to be like stepping in front of them, preventing anything from getting remotely close, right? Because it's going to be a lot, of, a lot of fire incoming. So, but that, that would have been a quick adjustment that you guys could have done there. So let's see kind of what else happens here. Um, so you guys are super low based off that. Yeah, and then I'm guessing they're like a fire strike in or something. Yeah, so fire strike, Zarya just goes in, not a lot you can do, Diva can't really appeal, you guys need to have died, good, Diva got out, I think. Oh, your Zen's kind of doomed, yeah, good that you guys got out, a, a better team probably would have probably been able to take advantage of that, um, you guys might have wanted to just go in and die, honestly. So, let's see how the next fight shapes up. Diva's playing forward, which I don't really know why, they're playing a little bit spread, okay, you guys got high ground advantage. Alright, don't like the first person. I don't know if this is our camera guy or not, uh, but try to avoid first person stuff in general if you want a little more positive feedback. So let's see, we're looking at the Ryan gameplay here. Not really seeing a lot of Zarya leapfrog so much. Um, I don't know if Fisher's playing a little passive afraid of damage or what, you need some a little bit of backup. Doesn't looks like he trusts the supports very much, to be honest with you. Um, which, that was a pretty good setup for that. I don't like that charge so much, um, especially with nothing down. I mean, it worked out. Um, but let's kind, of, let's kind of do a brief rewind. Okay, so a couple options here. Their Ryan's really far out of position, right? Their whole team is looking on the left side for peel, right? So their Ryan's in the middle of nowhere. You got this whole team just looking to shoot your Ryan. I probably would have called speed boost as Lucio to, to try to take advantage of that position. Go go point, really? Quit, quit doing this kind of... <sighs> okay, so let, let's, let's dive into a little bit about what your goal is in, in Overwatch in general. is to maximize the amount of high-value fights that you can have. Right, and, and and poking at the choke is, is kind of you're just kind of waiting, right? If you guys are just kind of poking back and forth, you're waiting for an opening, or right? any kind of opening you can you can. So, uh, however, you see like the plat thing that happens a lot of the time is that people just they, they wait for that window of opportunity way too long, and they end up getting like one or two fights over like the you know two to four minute period that ends up being one of the first, one of the rounds. So one thing you just gotta do is see these little micro openings. You know, the Ryan's out of position completely by himself. You speed boost into him. They have to make a decision, right? They're they're gonna try to punish your backline. Or they're gonna have to go help their Ryan and by by rotating back back around. The chances of them all doing the same thing and, and actually punishing you guys for it's pretty slim for the most part, especially if you guys are playing goats. You guys are generally more condensed in general, um, and you guys you have the you have the ability that you're the aggressors, right? So if they if they have like their diva dive in super quick, not everyone can move at the same speed. Remember, so the other diva might try to dive in to go go for the back line, but you guys can turn around. And and mess her up no problem. So I'm hoping that you guys are playing condensed. I see the Ryan Zarya are close. I don't see the Lucio Aura anywhere. I don't know if it shows up on Spectator. I can't remember off the top of my head, to be honest with you. I think it does. So I'd like to see the Lucio closer. Uh, Brig should be kind of in this general area somewhere. Getting ready to help to help out. Um, you guys aren't getting dove or anything, so she should really need to play back. I do see she just took some damage, so they're probably freaking out. No big deal. So especially with goats and, and burst healing, if your Ryan's high shields, and you can kind of be just just call him to hold shield or something along those lines. So, all right, let's see how the rest of this fight plays out. Okay, let's see. So yeah, that'd be a good opportunity to go go push point. You know, go go force that fight. Because if you guys 14% right now, you guys go push, get wiped. They're at 25%. You respawn 30. You know, and, and then you guys get another clean fight, as opposed to just having this really really long drawn out one that that may or may not work out. We're building all, so just kind of doing the really annoying back and forth cool goats ult thing um plus the benefit of being the aggressor in that situation too is you might force out an ult that they weren't ready for um good job on your zenyatta for building ult so quickly despite being dead your whole team being dead most of the time um let's see what we got here okay so yes the is playing a little bit closer which is good lucio is kind of dicking around no big deal um i would so i'm guessing yeah he's building shield no big deal there he's gonna get booped they're gonna back shatter back line <laughs> I'm I'm not a big fan of the charge, uh, so this is this is this is kind of why I'm not a big fan of the charge. I, I do see that you're trancing, uh, which is good, that that you're not just charging for fun essentially. But that's why I'm not really a big fan of the charge in this situation here is because your whole team's backline shattered, right? They can't follow up. You, you can't really one shot a lot of things in goats for the most part. Um, so I mean you're gonna be going after the Ryan, the Zarya, the, the Diva, you're gonna be the things in the front line, right? You can't really one shot that stuff. So you you guys. Are all on the ground, so you have no follow up. But the, even if you do happen to hit it, I understand you're tra probably trying to counter charge the Ryan from hitting one shotting one of your teammates. I'm assuming that you just missed. Uh, if that was the case, that's fine, especially because Lucy doesn't have boot. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't be charging to just go into the front line. You, you can cancel a charge super quick, you don't really need to go into it. You can do like a weird little hop step and quick shift into it, which I'm sure you know. So it looked like you might have got booped or something. Well, I'm assuming that was your that was your train of thought there. So there's Diva Bomb. 
turn around there. Yeah, you're, you're main tank's in trouble. I would like to see the general flow of the fight, though. It's kind of hard to really be able to nitpick much from, from seeing first-person right only perspective. So it looks like your team got grabbed to the back line. They did grab bomb combo. Fisher needs to make a choice, either come back to the team or kind of let everyone die, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. So I think we're just hoping... Let's see, looking at, there's no ult online. We just got no trance, no beat. So I think he's just going to... Let's see, did they just fuck it up or something? I'm guessing they did. Still got a couple picks, though. Made it work. So I don't like that we committed beat to it. Uh, one thing that I'm, you're also going to see most of the time with ghosts is when you have, when you have two dead in every ult in general unless it's last fight um because they just snowball so easily so that's a really bad beat we don't want to do that um speeding out's okay if you're just the solo lucio not too bad <sighs> all right okay reset so let's see what else we got coming online so we still are really slow at building the zariel which isn't good um let's see that coming a little bit quicker let's see here so Oh, you guys just walked. Did we just walk up and get shattered? Is that what, we, is that what happened here? Why is my thing's not working? Okay, let's back up. So you guys intro that pretty good with with the regroup and everything, but it looks like we just pushed ahead of our Rhine. Yeah, and that's just that's. Oh, so he got split, and then he just and then the Rhine made a good play. So and then that's one of the things too where we want to be more condensed with goats in general. Um, you don't really ever want to be split from your team too far away. I used to do this a lot of the time as Ryan, um, to try to pull aggro so the rest of my team can advance cleanly. Not quite what you need to do in GOATS, um, because the whole team's going to be clustered no matter what. So they're going to try to pick the most out of position thing and just try to be aggressive on it, in which case is the Ryan. So they were like, we can hit the back line. Um, and then it's going to be really, they're going to have a lot of follow up with it now. So, and you guys can get up and panic, but you're probably going to be really down in health pools. So we'll see how that ends up panning out for you guys. They should. Honestly, they should win that fight, no problem, but knowing that they probably won't, so we'll see. Oh, there they go. Okay, they did good. So, not really a lot you can do there. So, I mean, obviously, you don't really want to be out of position in that situation, but, you know, be, be tracking. The, the main thing to take away from that track shatter is track ults. You know, the main tanks really have to be keep an eye on what's, what damage is coming in so they know what ults are, are coming up and online. Um, you should usually have a general idea. I'm guessing we just didn't or didn't expect them to have it. And that's why we played that way, but it's something that we need to do better. So, that's good there. Your Zarya should be building a little bit more charge. One thing in general I like to see the Zarya do is, is wait until the shields drop for a, probably a hair of a second a little bit more often. Or not more often, but, but a hair of a second a little bit more duration goes by that his shields down so they can focus him a little bit better. Because if you just kind of do it like the second that, his shield, that he drops his shield to swing around a little bit, they're, they're going to know. I mean, most people are going to pick up on that pretty quick. So, just something to keep in mind. We got that going on. Okay, so one thing that I think is kind of weird right here is that... We didn't really push the D.Va at all or anything. We just kind of are still we're still really focusing on frontline. I think that would be something that we could have could have done, taken advantage of. Um, so we can really we can really push those out of position things. Um, but not really a big deal. D.Va's mobile, so they get back. But yeah, wait a little bit to your Ryan's engaged exchanging swings. I don't really I don't really like this graph. Um, reason why I don't really like it is because D.Va had ult and we got a bomb, which is important. Um, you guys weren't up on health at all, uh, and grabs not really. They have so much, so many AOE heals, and with with all the defensibles that they have, and they actually made a mistake here, and they tranced and uh, they tranced and beat it here. So usually, what you want to do is because I'm a big bomb. First of all, if the combo is there, use it, you know. And, and you can usually pick get the Ryan to you know pin or shatter or something along those lines to make sure that he can't really shield shield the whole thing. Um, so you guys can at least get rid of the, the, the beat, and if they're just trancing it, then they're going to all die anyway. So, But one thing you can do when you're when you're grabbing is try to focus down something to half health or below. Um, and then one dead giveaway when you're playing Zarya too, and this is something that you'll notice if, if you're a D.Va player as well for the defense. So let's say they have a higher energy Zarya that's just farming the hell out of you guys. If he pops personal bubble and continues to walk forward, he's probably going to grab. Most of the time, right? So just, that's just something you can keep an eye out on too. Um, you didn't do it in this situation, we're saying in general, it's kind of a, it's kind of a good tip. Um, and the one thing you can do too, uh, that's kind of, a, I guess, I wouldn't say, I don't know, overlooked in general, is that you can grab a little bit higher in general off these off these areas here. And then and so what you want to do too is, is when they're in positions like this, how they're kind of like playing off this wall area, is if you can grab get them to have, kind of get like baby split. When I say baby split, like they have their front line like kind of right here, and then the wall is like 
kind of the separator point and their back line's like kind of playing back here you hit that wall it might suck some of the supports back here and they won't actually be able to help hit the um won't actually be able to hit the defensive walls on a couple people so a little bit creative you should be a little more creative with your grabs and just kind of throw it to the group because they're there they're always going to be grouped up because of goats right and you're going to do a ton of damage and they're going to defensive wall and then you're still going to do a ton of damage and nothing's dead so um something to think about there so there are no defensive vaults. I hope that was called. You guys should be being really, really aggressive because you have trance, right? That momentum pull. You guys are using grab or uh, rally, so that's good. Let's see, you use that. Good, good. And then you guys are being aggressive off of it, which is good. Unfortunately, your, your Ryan didn't really get the support that he needed, though. I feel like there. So let's kind of see what happens. So we could kind of get an idea. It looks like he's spending a lot of his time with his shield up and, and kind of let's say running away, but having to play defensively a lot of times. So he's no, no buddy bubble. Doesn't think you guys are focusing your targets very well, to be honest. And what I mean by that is, your Zarya is shooting something, Diva is going after something, your Brig is noodling this guy, and your Ryan's over here. That's four different things that could be shooting the same thing, and getting instant melted, right? And I think your Ryan got pinned, so I understand why you're not all shooting him. But there's no excuse for these people to be shooting all these different things. This actually looks like kind of a funny dance. So this is very important to notice. Um, but yeah, so you guys really need to be doing a better job of um, listening to each other, prioritizing callouts, you know, no kill order for the most part, low things. Uh, you see the Zarya and the Ryan are kind of low. Well, he's not really not low, but, you know, know, know the kill order of certain things. He's out of position. This Brig is horribly out of position. You guys should really kill him immediately. If I'm being honest, you know, if, if your Brig goes after it, your Zarya goes after it, and your Diva is not busy, whatever this is, um, then you guys are in much better shape. So that's one thing that you guys can immediately improve on. Oh no! I think we were up here. No, it's after you cap. Okay, I think we were maybe. Man, I thought we were a lot farther than that, that's for sure. Uh, yes, yeah, so here we are. So there's that grab. I said, be a little more creative with it. You can probably catch around corners. Or actually, probably could cut the Zen around the corner if you would have waited a half second. I know you want to try to time it around the, the, the Diva, but something you can work on too. So you guys commit to shatter stars on the ground. So one thing you can do too, yeah, just, just commit, commit to shooting the thing on the ground. Be aware of this ride that's going in a position. Call something and, and attack it. Don't all be going your own individual directions. Got the DVD suit, which is good. Looks like the whole team shot it, which is also good. That's a good bomb. Nice. That was an easy cleanup. Okay. So, you guys have Zenal online. That's good. Grab coming up. Um, beat coming up. I would say for the most part that they're going to have grab next fight. Um, and if you're tracking it, which is kind of the natural way the game's flowing, you're gonna know that they have they have grav bomb combo. That's probably what they're gonna be going for mainly. So you want to be farming your Lucio ult so that you can at least have one counter um, in case Fisher gets shattered or gets pinned or in that awkward situation where you're in a grab and you're like, what the heck am I gonna do? Um, which where you want to give them a little bit of ground. You know, give, give your Lucio a little bit of time to build up, build back a little bit, um, and, and build your ult economy back up. You have positioning. You know, you're you're down on their on their big combo. You know, and if you guys are tracking, you know, they probably have Shattered too. Ryan, Ryan's are usually pretty good about tracking each other. Uh, but you want to farm that Lucio wall and, and make sure that you guys have that counter ready to go. Um, one thing that I'm kind of noticing is that your Ryan really likes to play around corners, um, which is fine for non-GOATS comps in general, right? Because your team is usually a little bit more mobile, usually a little more spread. Um, but if you're going to be playing Ryan against... A goat's composition. You have to be that front line, right? Like I'll see if I can draw this this fucking thing. So let's see. We got our we got our wall right here. So let me try to use this in my head here. So we got our wall right here. Okay. Now we want to be a little bit diagonal. We've got our wall right here, right? Points like let's see. Points like right here or something like that. Okay. You got their team. Do do do. Three, four, five, six people. They're they're playing goats right. They're doing that little clusterfuck of death, right? That's, that's that's what they're going for. That's what they're going to do, um, and they want to be they want to be the aggressor for the most part. So, if you turn around and you're like, "Hey, I'm gonna play. We're gonna play goats. We're gonna have our diva up here. Our Zarya's gonna be right here. Our Ryan's gonna be over here." Yes. So, because and that's a really common thing to do is Ryan. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad habit to be into. Stand around corners and swing at them and hit them as they walk in. Not a bad idea at all. Well, let's just say your support line is something like over here for Lucio, over here for Brig, and I'm gonna guess your Zen's gonna be like some back here-ish, right? So this is what this is my issue with it is they get two options, and these are options that you don't have because you're spread. Is that 
they are so far up. This isn't really to scale, mind you, because look at how kind of close they are. They can literally just choose to walk at this person, and then you have to just kind of swing at them in the back. And if you do that, if you get a Discord orb on you, their whole team turns and shoots you and you die immediately. Cause, and your team can't really bail you out because they're able to just condense on you, compress on you really, really quickly. Um, the Lucio is doing something stupid. I don't know what he's doing. He's probably the ding-dong of the group, um, which is fine. Everyone needs one of those for comedic humor and, and to yell at the Lucio while he's being a fucking Reddit lord. Um, but just in general, something to watch out for, especially. Um, is, your Zarya is going to be a primary target a lot of the time. A Zen, a Zen couple... The Discord and a couple Zendings, and she's in trouble. And no, and no really shield or anything to back her out. I don't see a break immediately available either, which kind of sucks for her. Um, Diva can only matrix so much, especially after the nerves. So um, you kind of got to be that front line. You know, you got to make sure you're not letting them get that that big damage, um, that big damage disadvantage, which is good they have it. Like that you guys have the damage going forward. So you got to play really, really aggressively here and be able to track that damage. It takes so much communication. Um, I mean, it's just not a good idea to get split either, especially with that Ryan getting a couple big shatters. Uh, something to watch out for. Um, one thing too is that it kind of opens you guys up for a big bomb really, really easily because um, you're out of position. So they, they go through a grab bomb and how are you going to get over there to be the one line of defense? You didn't farm your Lucio all. Um, in general, you got to be playing condensed with your team because if they grab and bomb, let's say they grab, let's say your D.Va runs out of Matrix, they grab this light pole of all things, right? They grab your D.Va into it, go into there, your Zarya goes, I'm assuming the support is somewhere over here. Let's say they get yoinked into it too. What's your play? Honestly, what's your play right here? You can't go really charge into the grab, turn, and shield. That's dumb, right? Um, you can't really go help them in any way, shape, or form. You're just kind of kind of hope that they're going to time their cooldowns, right? Diva's going to live, and your support guy's going to get blocked by the Zarya bubble. It's your only play. So you want to give yourself options, you know? So you've got to be really be aware of the wind conditions. Uh, that's a super common over, overused Overwatch phrase in general. But um, your wind condition here is to avoid getting big bomb combos so you can farm your ults and then use this trance to the best of your ability all right so you got it's like especially being 99 you got to play really really passive if this was like your first fight i'd be like sure go for it do a risky play hit him like a five-man fire strike or charge in go for an instant pen. you know weird shit like that you guys gotta play safe it's 99 you got zero mistakes on the board you gotta make them make the plays and you know make sure they do like make sure they're doing the follow-through on it and then you're not leaving the door too far open Make, make them make the plays and punish their mistakes, especially as you're building ult economy. You're so, and you're so close to some big ones, too. You got, grab, you got your grab, you got your B coming up, you got trance, I mean, to refarm all the stuff that you lose. I mean, they got some potential here. So let's see what happens. So rotate's over quick enough. That's good. Didn't really take advantage. Didn't have bomb yet, or uh, grab yet, which is great. So guys are play your Zarya's playing really split from your Ryan. Not a huge fan of that, but not really overly big. So he goes for the counter charge. They do big bomb. I think we just didn't commit, yeah, so we didn't commit our shield, which kind of sucks, and we didn't, we just got beat. Let's, let's, let's run that back and see what kind of adjustments we might have been able to make here. See that, Ryan's getting, Ryan's shield's getting farmed, which kind of sucks. So yeah, this is a situation where your shield's getting so low, and, and your Ryan is in particular super low. If your break doesn't have her main heal, you guys just back, back up. Honestly, back up. You guys have point control, you guys have trance. Um, you guys have beat online, pretty much ready to go. You're playing that long con, you know, so just back up, play off point, play defensively, make them, make them go really, really far out of their way. Tell your Lucio to freaking speed boost you guys the fuck back, you know. There's no reason to take this fight. There's just not, you know, especially when you guys are down low on your main tank heals. And he does a good job of staying alive, being the primary target. Um, but you guys didn't really need to take the fight here, to be honest. So he's trying to use a pillar, which you can only do so much. You guys pop grab. Which is fine. I don't hate using grab there. You only have one tank that's halfway low, which kind of sucks. Um, they don't have a defensive ult up, which is good tracking, I'm assuming. Um, Parallels and Wizards gets shattered, which is unfortunate because that's the, that's the counterplay. I didn't really see Fisher's positioning so much. But um, one thing that you can do a lot of the time is when you know they're waiting on Big Bomb. If they grab, you can use the grab almost immediately afterwards to try to stop the Diva from being able to get hers off. And then that's a that's a really good counterplay you could have done. I don't really like the offensive one here because they weren't low enough to really take advantage of it. And I'm guessing you're trying to beat Zentrance, but that's kind of a big thing to be playing off of, right? Because that's like maybe a couple things away from, from getting it. So Anyway, the counter grab, just expect your shield is low because you guys didn't just engage. The trance is solid, and I get it. And you guys kind of beat because you felt like you had to, which is fine. Your Zen split, you guys are just going to kind of get farmed in sequence. Really good right click, though. 
but not really a lot you guys can do. Ooh, Divas somehow alive. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, then Fisher can't really make it. It's unfortunate. Unlucky. But small small adjustments I think you guys can do to make to make that work. Um, let's see here. Did you guys do the first fight already? It looks like they did. Yes, they did. Okay. Sorry, I didn't. I usually take notes on when to when to skip to, but I did not do that this time. Okay, so you guys are doing it for a first fight and get okay. Lucy's out of position. I'm sure you guys know. Zarya Bubble's getting really early in fight. I really hope I got a lot of energy off that. So I'm just gonna wait till your rhyme's a little bit more in the clusterfuck, as I believe I mentioned. Um, let's really go for that. So let's see what else happens here. Lucio just kind of so they're booping you down. The second your breaks down, just go pull team down. Uh, they have the advantage. it's like a five v six. You can't really do anything. And the only one that you can really allow to get booped down is your diva. The rest of you guys just, just go down to point by down point. If you guys get split as goats, it's a death sentence. So. You guys, just, there you go. I think they got. I think they booped you down, which is nice. You're sorry, I did not get the memo, which is probably going to lead to your guys' early demise because your main DPS is gone. Your Zen's kind of getting dove, which is interesting. So if, if that happens, start if that if this starts happening when you're playing goats, um, your Zen needs to play closer, and then you guys need to start punishing the fuck out of that diva. I mean, leave the break to the stunwalker. Something to think about. The first time I've seen it, I wouldn't really worry about it. You guys are man down, so just something to keep an eye on. You know, one, one thing you want to do when you're playing as high level players, you want to notice their tendencies about as quick as you can. Um, just so you can see what they're going to be going for, different play styles, and sort of what, what adjustments you can make. Let's see what else we got. Alright. So they're going to actually go for a holder, or a holder close, a closer hold, which is fine. Bliss, you need to do a little bit better job of not pushing ahead of your team so quickly. Um, to, to take a decent amount of intro damage. Salt you as well. So, with this, okay, this is one thing I'd like to point out. Your Ryan needs to know that you guys just burned a ton of all, all your support cooldowns, just trying to keep you guys healthy as you walked up, and that means you play slow for another eight seconds or so. And I know no 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 Ryan likes to hear that because slow is boring, and boring is not how we want to play Overwatch. Um, the guy, you guys are down on cooldown advantage, right? You guys just burned them all, just trying to get them out of point. You know, and your your Lucio probably just uses E. Your Briggs done on her E two. They probably have both of theirs ready to go for this next fight. Your Diva's still super low. You know, you guys literally have no advantage coming into this. Um, your Zarya's not even high charge. Well, I mean, I, the Megan's not off this bubble, but still. Play it a little bit slower, get your cooldown back, you know, go for some go for some peaks and, and try to do some little, you know. Don't be afraid to build your alt economy. Don't be afraid to build cooldown economy. And then this has got to be something where your primary support's got to say, hey, let's chill the fuck out, let's disengage or, or play slow. It's a really nice one. It's a really good call that I like personally. So to play slow, people know that, hey, we're not being offensive here. We're, we're either rebuilding cooldowns or rebuilding health pools or something's going on you know um you guys will kind of get familiar with that as you this your cinema charge not bad the rent low which is good i think you just used shatter which did it get anyone no, i didn't really notice that it's a terrible grab by them if they just used that oh, did. Wow. i guess let's back it up a little bit okay so here we start going in Fisher swinging around. Your Zarya is good. You guys are doing the leapfrog, which I don't know if I've talked to you guys about that, but it's not really a difficult concept. Essentially, Ryan starts backing up. Zarya goes in front, pause personal um, to help the Ryan lose a little bit of um, lose a little bit of pressure and, and get healthy real quick. Solitude still hasn't gotten full health, by the way, which is unfortunate to see. I guess we're doing that. Fisher is half. Solitude super low. Probably that's unfortunate. Is that your break? It's a weird player icon, or player model, but I'm assuming it's a brig. Fisher just dies, which is, that's just a good focus fire by the other team. Um, you'll notice the better, the better teams you play, if you have a discord on you as Reinhardt, and you have no armor, you're going to die. When you drop your shield, you're just gonna. That's it. So uh, that's an adjustment you can make. I have no idea what rank this team is. Uh, I'm gonna guess they're probably about 3.7-ish, maybe. Uh, maybe 3.4 to 3.7, that ballpark. Um... Nothing, nothing too wild. I mean, they're just kind of playing basic goats. So, um, let's see here. So they use grab unnecessary because they're already down in person. So that's good for you guys. Gotta say, hey, you know, they use grab and not kind of big bomb. Um, try to use that to your user user missile to your advantage and try to think how you can work around them. Right. So you're gonna have diva bomb, you're gonna have trance, and they're gonna rally. I would think they'd have beat after all this, but I guess not. Um. Bliss really likes to take a lot of damage ahead of the Reinhardt, which needs to stop because um, it's causing a lot of healing cooldown. So, so your user, your user just had to use his E. 
All right, and you guys are blowing all these cooldowns, walking, just just walking up and getting up. You guys don't need to get to their team so quickly. Feel free to take it slow, you know, and like chill a little bit. Um, stop going ahead of your Ryan is a great way to do it. Ryan, just shield jump up there, don't charge up. You know, it's a little, little simple things. I mean, you're gonna get focused down. People are gonna take damage, but if you can just take damage to the point where your one Zen Orb is gonna be enough, and you guys can save your Lucio E's and your Brigies for the engagement, you'll be in much better shape. So let's see what happens. It's gonna decide to trance. Okay, defensive trance. It's fine. Shift from your guys' side. That's an unfortunate bomb location. Your team gets split, and they probably just melt you down. Yeah, you guys don't have a lot of plays there. That was a good. That was a good bomb. Not for the fact that it didn't, it didn't get any kills, right? So that's not really super impressive bomb. But that's a good bomb in the sense that it split your team up, and then you guys are doing the thing that you shouldn't do, which is kind of keep walking out of spawn individually. People are dying, stay in spawn, teams will continue to punish you until they're actually humping your spawn door. So be, be really cautious about that, because good teams will continue to, they'll just continue to melt you. So good backup by you two. Alright, so let's see. Side guys, side. I do like the change up just to decide to go that way. Are you guys going down low? don't really like that part, because it can... We'll do that, but that, that's more of a Reddit Lucio thing. Um, the reason I don't really like it is because they can drop directly from high ground on you, you know, weird spots, weird angles, uh, things along those lines. So, go get grab off. You kind of were split super hard from the Lucio. And you guys kind of went to point a little too soon, is kind of the main, the main issue there. Um, you guys are actually making a fight of it, which is impressive. Especially being down two people, I believe. You kind of had to make a play there, so I understand that one. And that's just your Zen thinking last fight, so that's where we're going to commit that. I think your Zen does a lot of good things, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't really like to use that. Now we're starting the trickle game. Just delay as long as we can. Yeah. So not really a lot you can do about that. But I don't really like pushing that bottom just because like, there's so many angles that they can push you from. And you can't really you can't really prepare for all of them. There's no way of knowing unless you have a really solid scout or someone kind of that up high area up here. Um, to know where they're going to be able to dive down on you from. They can use they can use grab, they can, they can split you with bomb, they can boop you like crazy like that Lucio for no reason. Um, they're going to have a really good focus fire area for Zarya right clicks to build all. I mean, it's just not a, not a great place to be. So, is this a... Third Busan game? Hmm. Okay. Let's play this out. This might be an open division thing. That, the rule that I, the, they changed, I have no idea to be honest with you. I haven't followed this stuff for a long time. Okay, so they're running. Same goes with Hamster. Which hamster disruptions? So they're, what they're doing is, is they're going to be working on the hamster, trying to move you guys out of position and away from each other to group them away. And, and the, pri the hamster's primary goal is going to be to move your focus fire away from the front line and onto the hamster so that you guys aren't being as effective as you should be. That's what their goal is going to be. So you, when you see these team comps, that's kind of what you got to be thinking. Is what, are, what are they trying to do? Um, and what are they trying to do that counters my team comp? And what can we do to counter theirs? Right? So what you do is a lot of time ignore the hamster or stun lock it off the brig. Right, be in a position. Make sure your Lucio is in a position to stun the hamster back to your team after he boops. Uh, little things like that. You don't want to leave your Zenyatta or anyone alone either, because this is what the hamster is going to do. So once you guys start splitting, he's going to pick you guys apart individually. Right? Um, I don't know if you guys just left spawn a little too early. You guys are kind of doing that whole ladder leave spawn. Where I'm, what I mean by ladder leave spawn is like sort of how it is on ladder, where you just kind of walk out and go to like a close-ish choke. But in, in, scrim, in scrim settings, you don't want to do that because if you leave five v six, they're gonna they're gonna identify it, and just wreck the fuck out of you. So let's see. one moment, please. Okay, so I'm guessing this is paused till about here. Oh, let's just run it anyway. Okay, so they just killed you guys. Whatever. Okay, so I lost someone. You guys grabbing, don't grab the two healthiest things on the team usually. Not recommended. 
I want to make sure you at least get a squishy into it. I do like the transition to dive. Um, well, I guess the, the monkey. Um, that dive wouldn't actually have been a bad idea here. DPS works really well against hamster. Um, although it's, it's 5v6, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly you know what's working and what's not. But um, anything with hamster as a main tank dive inherently works well on because you can't really counter dive super well. Um, let's see here. Brig is kind of a big cuck word for that, but for the most part, that if you guys play it right, spread out their team a decent amount, then you'll be okay. Get out of here, buddy. <sighs> I don't really have interest in running input to 5v6. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. If you guys have anything, any timestamps you want me to go over, just let me know. Um, they got King's Row coming up. Okay. So I am actually going to, I'm going to cut the video right now. Uh, I'm going to upload this one, let it get going, and then I will be, while that's going on, then I'm going to cover the King's Row one as well.